about computer games. What do you think about the phenomenon of computer games? On the one hand, this is a deep immersion into an illusion, into a foreign reality which is often accompanied by dependence, and on the other, it is a product of this reality, and everything around us is an illusion, including our sensory experience. This is my major passion and pain, and strong dependence. Is it even worthy for a person who follows the path of awareness to be designing computer games? thereby strengthening the world of illusions. For me, it is an opportunity, a tool that can be used to implant the right keys and meanings while building my own illusion, my own reality. Or am I just serving the enemy leading myself and my players away from awareness? No, colleague, not at all. Each of us chooses his own way of filling reality. Even virtual reality in the form of computer games is also a certain place that, until recently, has remained empty, like a blank spot that could be filled with our personal imagination. Actually, there are not too many fantasizing people out there, while many more of those who are compiling someone else's fantasies. That is why our reality is like a layer cake, where each layer repeats the previous one, maybe with some minor changes, but the essence remains the same. Computer games have provided us with a certain variety. But this is a mechanism, and like any mechanism, it can serve two purposes, life and death. Or, as the philosophers of old times, not the ones of antiquity but of old times, used to say that any new technology is first used for military and only later for peaceful purposes. So first, it falls into the hands of the military, and when they finish playing with it, it can be used for the purposes of life. The same thing applies to computer games. Computer simulations make learning very easy, but on the other hand, they deprive your consciousness of the ability to take part in actual reality. By the way, the people who initiated the current worldly situation, who are now starting wars, who are now committing paradoxical actions that unfortunately affect the lives of millions, studied life precisely from computer games, mostly from computer games. They don't really know how to distinguish reality from fiction, they perceive the whole world as a virtual scenery. And in case anything happens, they can either delete the scenery or download it from the last checkpoint without problems. And this, of course, distorted their consciousness, it certainly did. This is the so-called stage of war called, the elimination of the weakest links. Those who can't combine virtual reality with the current reality, who can't see the common ground, and who won't be able to see the significant differences will, of course, be eliminated. But those who will be able to do so, who will see that, who will connect all this in synergy, thereby making the human being more successful and more developed, but at the same time help him not to become an accessory to the virtual realities, will probably come out victorious. Why do you think there is such a race to be the fastest and most successful in creating metaverses? Those very metaverses the Facebook guy is fussing like a fool about. Because they perfectly understand that whoever will be the first to create a virtual reality that is indistinguishable from the real one will no longer have a need in the modern world and will become the ruler of his own kingdom. And maybe everyone will get an opportunity to become the ruler of his own kingdom. But this would happen through the technogenic path. There is also the magical path as well as the mystical path that we should never forget about. The path of technology is one of the paths, but they also can be combined together. Something can be taken from technology, something from this, something from that. So if your original intention, that is of great importance here is not just to make money from successfully selling computer games, but to implement algorithms with the use of which a person can achieve this very effect, the ability to combine virtual and actual reality without damaging the latter and for the growth of the first then maybe these algorithms will help you achieve everything you want.
талант. And your dependence will turn to talent. A talent of such a level that will allow you to go from being a regular game developer, which are a dime a dozen, to being someone whose name will be forever inscribed in the annals of the digital world, just as the name of Satoshi Nakamoto is now written in stone. He, too, set high goals for himself. Making a quick buck was not his goal, not at all. His goal was to become independent from the current financial system and share this technology with those who similarly suffer from endless verifications and the infinite, know your client principle. He set out to create a technology free of all these regulators, shall they burn in hell, and created such a system. The fact that he earned a fortune from it along the way is the natural effect of everything ingenious, but he did initially set a higher goal. Hear me, colleague, if you set out a very high goal not for yourself personally but to serve your hypertask, you shall receive everything your soul desires. But it is very important for it to be actually so, without a trace of self-deception. Therefore, what concerns computer games, it depends on the purpose of why they are being created. And if you think about your large-scale goal thoroughly, your dependence can become a talent and possibly even a unique talent that could be rightfully named after you. I myself am not a fan of computer games, but it's my personal position since this interferes with my personal work and development. But this is my path, and you can have your own, which may require this particular tool that helps forming new neural connections much faster than any meditative method would, for example, which means that you receive additional tools for adoption. So, keep this in mind. The fact that it gives you pleasure is just an endorphin addiction, just an endorphin addiction. Read everything you can find about endorphin addiction. Find a countermeasure, an antidote against this problem. От э, этой напасти, потому что есть определенные способы и упражнения и даже пищевые продукты. As there are certain methods and exercises and even foods that can help you get rid of an endorphin addiction. Возможно, вы увидите немножко другие э, намерения в, в том, что вы сейчас называете зависимостью. Ограничивать себя. And then you'll perhaps see a slightly different intention behind what you now call addiction. It's foolish to limit yourself in activities that you enjoy. You just have to put the activity on a higher level and your enjoyment on a lower level, and make sure they don't switch places since it is enjoyment that should be the fuel for your activity. Whereas when the activity becomes the fuel for your enjoyment, you get a serious addiction problem, and that means big trouble. Watch out for that, and everything will be fine.